Hey everyone, welcome back to Michigan Ambush Outdoors for this week's video. Today we're gonna do a squirrel hunt. I'm on a new piece of public land that I've never been to. So I'm gonna work my way through here. I'm gonna get set up somewhere, but then I'm also gonna let you guys know what you need to look for when you're squirrel hunting and how to squirrel hunt. We're gonna talk about the type of sign you need to look for and how I would set up based on that sign that we're seeing. Keep in mind that we got a lot of snow on the ground right now. So this is definitely a late season squirrel hunt. So this time of year is gonna differ from if you're going out early September or October and you're trying to squirrel hunt. So let's go ahead, we're gonna get started. Start working our way back and we'll get set up. So in the beginning of the video we were talking about how to squirrel hunt, what to look for uh, in the late season, and how I would personally set up on them. <clears throat> so when I'm hiking through, I'm just trying to pay attention to the treetops and looking for sign up there to see if I see a lot of nests. And nests, you can't mistake them. I showed you that one up there. It's just a big cluster of leaves. Uh, where, where squirrels are nesting at and then also if you start to look around and you start to see Dead trees in the area with big holes in them. Most likely Squirrels are living inside the trees as well That's gonna be my first indicator that there's squirrels in the in the area The sign that I start to look for on the ground is areas where Obviously squirrels are digging in the ground for food and let me show you a quick example The next thing that I'm going to look for is just various tracks of small game. You can see here that squirrels are actively running this logging road right here or this uh, this two track that the DNR used to plant these fields. So those are really my three main indicators. Now how I would approach setting up to hunt squirrels is probably a lot different than uh, the majority of people that squirrel hunt just based on people that I've talked to and other content that I've watched out on YouTube is a lot of people do like a run and gun style uh, and I do enjoy that but unfortunately that style doesn't typically work for me very well. Whenever I do a run and gun style hunt, I typically end up with less squirrels in my bag uh, than I do if I would just be patient, sit on the ground, and wait. Usually after you fire a shot, if you wait 10-15 minutes, the squirrels will eventually come back out because the thing about squirrels is they do need to feed and they, they I mean, they, they are active animals um, in the daytime. For me, historically, I've had my best luck in the morning versus like middle of the day. However, in the late season, um, it's not rare for me to see squirrels when I'm out walking around sunning themselves in trees. So you really gotta slow down, pay attention to the woods, keep your eyes up in the trees to see if you see any. The next thing that I wanna talk about that I do frequently when I'm out squirrel hunting is I always carry a squirrel call with me. This is my favorite call that I have. It's from JPO Game Calls here in Michigan. He's a local small business. Uh, him and his wife actually run this company and make these calls. I first met Paul at the Outdoor Rama in uh, Michigan in Novi, uh, and I picked this call up from him three years ago. Again, my favorite call. I get a ton of comments on this call. Uh, people asking about where I got it, who it's from, how can they get it. Uh, so I'll have more information and I'll do kind of like a further review on this call. But for now, I just wanna to touch base on how I use calls out in the woods. So when I'm out hunting squirrels and I'm out walking areas, I've found an area that I think has, is, is most likely holding a lot of squirrels. So I'll get posted uh, up in an area that gives me a good advantage point. It gives me the ability to see the surrounding area. Uh, you don't want to set yourself up somewhere where you're going to have a ton of brush in front of you uh, because then you're not going to have you're not going to be able to get a shot off. But 
what again what I would do is I would get posted up and then I would let the woods calm back down from walking back in and then I would start utilizing the game call. A couple different calls that you can make with this is the one that I primarily use the most. A simple bark call you can get you can you can do and you can play around with this you don't have to do it the way that I do it I'm just telling you what works best for me but typically a couple barks and then I just let the woods calm back down and see if anything comes back out if you want you can also shake this call and it it, it simulates a chatter you can do that a couple times and see if anything comes out the purpose of the call is to really let squirrels start to move because they're very curious animals so they'll, they'll move and then they'll expose where they're hiding and hopefully you'll be in the the right spot so you can get a shot the next call and i just recently started carrying this is a squirrel dis distress call uh how you're going to use this call is you're just gonna you um you breathe in with it and what you're trying to do is you're trying to simulate uh, a squirrel uh, in distress, either being attacked by a predator or a hawk. Um, and then typically what that's gonna do is again, squirrels being curious animals, they're gonna come out of their nest, expose themselves, and you just gotta be ready and you gotta be scanning the treetops. So those are the two primary types of calls that I use. I also have a Primos call uh, that it was the first squirrel call I had ever purchased. I don't typically carry that one out with me anymore. I just use the one that I've gotten, uh, that I got from JPO. Uh, like I said, this is a fantastic call, custom game calls. Uh, and there will be a discount code that you can go over to JPO and pick up your own squirrel call. He makes a variety of calls as well. The next thing I want to talk about is if you are doing a run and gun type of situation, you're going to be scanning for, for movement further out in the woods. You're not going to be looking at immediate trees. When you see a squirrel out further in the woods, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use the trees to your advantage and move from tree to tree and then get into place so you can get a shot. Now when you get into position, you're gonna wanna use something to steady yourself so you can take aim on the squirrel and make a clean shot, especially with the 22. The 22 is a very proficient firearm to use when squirrel hunting. In my opinion, it does minimal damage to the meat. If you hit them in the right spot, um, either right behind the shoulder or best case in the head, then all the meats in perfect shape when you go to cook it. You don't have any broken bones that have splintered out because of the shot. So if you can take headshots on squirrels, that's what I would recommend. So when doing an ambush style hunt, what I like to do is put my back up against a tree and use some type of pad, either an old tree stand pad or a pad that you can just pick up at Myers or Walmart for pretty cheap, just to increase your comfort. When sitting in the tree, what I like to do is I like to rest my rifle on my knee, similar to what I do when I'm out turkey hunting. If a squirrel comes into range or a squirrel exposes itself, I typically will place my elbow on my knee to rest my rifle so I can get steady for the shot. Again, getting steady when shooting at a very small animal like a squirrel on a very small target, the steady you are, the more likely you are to be able to take a clean shot, make a clean kill, and retrieve the animal without wounding them. In my experience, it takes roughly about 15 to 20 minutes for the woods to calm back down after you've gotten to the spot where you've chose to set up. Once you've set up, ideally the best thing to do is to just sit and wait. So the more comfortable you make yourself, the more successful you'll be in the end. If you're looking for squirrel recipes, I can link a video up top uh, as just a suggestion as, as one of my favorite recipes. It's actually the squirrel roll-ups. I made a video on that to show you how to cook it from start to finish. So that's it for this video. I just wanted to share with you how I squirrel hunt, what's been successful for me over the years, and what I look for when I'm out in the woods. If you guys have any questions, please make sure to leave me a comment below. I'm happy to answer it. And then if you guys are looking for any type of squirrel calls, I would recommend going over and checking out JPO Game Calls. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you're notified next time we put out another outdoor adventure. And we'll see you guys on the next one.